So I found, I found the film fascinating. I'm from Canada, and uh, there's not the same kind of drill team culture in Canada. So this is new to me. In fact, when I was coming down, a friend of mine down here mentioned the Rangerettes as something that I had to like connect with because it really was a core part of Texas culture. So this was, I didn't expect to see this movie down here, so it was a real treat. And I'm wondering uh, what's, what got you to make this movie? What was the inspiration? Uh, uh, oh, I was a Rangerette manager way back when, so I'm not gonna age myself, but it was in the mid 90s. And um, left Kilgore, moved to Denton, got a degree in film, moved to Los Angeles and struggled for a decade and some change, and decided that it was, I was at a point in my career where I could actually make a decent movie for the Rangerettes. And they were at the time, Dana and Shelley in the college were at a point where they were ready to entertain someone finally coming in to make something. Cause they've been approached about the, about mainly reality television since probably the past 10 to 15 years, but they've been very, well, they've actually been, I jokingly call my North Korea. Like they will not let anybody in there. And so, <laughs> um, fortunately being from down the road in Overton and going to Kilroy College and knowing Dana and Shelley and having a relationship, they were very open, obviously, to me making the movie. And so uh, it started though, someone wanted me to update the showcase video inside the Ranger at Showcase and basically take 75 years and condense it into 15 minutes. And I thought, I'm, there's yeah, no problem. <laughs> No big deal. Yeah, so uh, we decided to make a movie first, and then we could make the 15-minute showcase video. So I think we made the right decision by going movie first. So okay. that's kind of a very condensed version of my involvement. Mm -hmm. And did you did you uh, know when you set out what you what the kind of the story was that you were going to tell? Like, did you have that in your head, or did it evolve in the process of shooting? Um, the A to Z story was pretty much set in stone because I knew their schedule and I knew that I wanted the first game to be the ending, and I knew that I wanted to start kind of somewhere where we could follow the girls trying out for the team and kind of get context from, you know, kind of from them. What was your question again? <laughs> Did you know what you oh, wanted yes, to focus yes. on? But now, their stories were, it was, um, it's a lot of fun for us, because it's extremely emotional these girls trying out and you know we would find ourselves kind of feeding off their emotions and we were emotional with one another so that part definitely was i don't want to necessarily call it a roller coaster but they're you know they're 18 19 year old girls and they're trying out for something that means so much to them and so we just kind of had to go with the flow for that but other than that it went, yeah, I would say from A to Z we got in. There was some social political stuff I wanted to get in there, but it would have made the movie much longer, and I just, I couldn't find a home for it. Yeah, yeah. And how was it for you to be in the middle of this incredibly intense emotional experience to have this guy, this jerk, sticking a camera in your face <laughs> when you're trying to keep it together? Um, in the beginning, it was, I mean, it got frustrating at times, and I definitely, I think Chip knows that I was like, oh my gosh, let me be emotional on my own, like, let me FaceTime my mom and cry, but um, now that I see it and now that I have the um, film, I can kind of show other people in my life kind of what it's like because it's so hard to explain. And even though it was hard, um, I'm very thankful that it happened because now I have it all on a film. And like in 20 years, I can show people and be like, look what I went through. And so, um, I mean, having them there was definitely sometimes really hard, but I was, I'm very thankful that I got to be a part of it. So. Nice. Are there any uh, questions in the audience? So it's not just me talking up here. I'm happy to continue talking, but <laughs> that's not really my job. My job is supposed to be to get all of you folks to ask some questions. Sorry. Just no, oh, over there. Yes. Look at that guy. He's running. He's fast. That's, that's why we hired <laughs> that's him. That's legit right there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I was wondering what kind of previous experience you had prior to going to Kilgore to try out for that. What did you do in high school? Um, I went to a performing arts high school in Salt Lake, and um, I had a graduating class of 23 kids, so it was a very small school, and I got a lot of um, individual attention from all my teachers, and I worked on a lot of ballet and modern, um, which was amazing, but I didn't do a lot of jazz, and as you can tell, we did a lot of jazz and a lot of kicking, and so my mom knew that I was going to go, and she said, all right, well, the day you graduate, we're getting in our cars, and we're driving our bus to Texas. And so I graduated on a Tuesday, and Thursday we were on the road, and I stayed at this woman's house for about two weeks, and she taught me just simply how to kick. 
and I also trained with several rangerettes through her. Um, and then I took about a week off, kind of let my body heal. I went to mini camp as well, which helped so much because you got to work with all of the rangerettes, learning rangerette routines, learning the kick routine. Um, and then I went back to her house, did three more days of the camp, went home for one day, and then I went to camp, or I went and tried out. And in no way did I feel prepared at all, but I felt like I did the best I could. Um, and a lot of my senior year, because going into my senior year, I went to mini camp. And so I kind of knew what it was like to kick, but not really. And so I tried to teach myself, but kicking by yourself is pretty hard. So, um, I mean, just doing all those camps over the summer, I feel like definitely is hands down the reason I made it. Because if I wouldn't have gone to those camps, I wouldn't have known how to kick or really how to do all the precision like jazz routines. So it helped a lot. Any other questions? I'm kind of interested how much of, uh, you're still on the Rangerettes, correct? Yes. Yeah? yeah? So how much, you know, you're in school, how much of your time do you have to, I mean, you're, trying, you're doing your studies, plus you're on the Rangerettes, how much time does that take up in a week? Is it really hard to kind of juggle? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's hard, but it's definitely um, doable. I mean, they try to make it so that if we do have practice, let's say, from one to nine, and they know we haven't practiced that long, they'll let us bring our laptops or bring our books, and we do homework in the aisles of the auditorium or wherever we can. Um, so we have practice every day at one o'clock, guaranteed, like no ifs, ands, or buts about it, Monday through Wednesday, or Monday through Friday, from one, and then it kind of ends whenever they say it ends. So usually it goes about till three or four, um, and sometimes they'll have Sunday practices, and so that's always hard, but they always make sure that we have time to do homework and they'll give us a they'll give us a dinner break and they'll give us I mean you're not working from one to nine constantly on stage because you're not in every dance or you're not in every routine so they definitely give you breaks which is nice um, and you can work on homework a lot during then but a lot of the girls um, a lot of us are on Phi Theta Kappa which is like a honor society um, which I am as well which is a three eight a three point eight and higher I think so a lot of us we we go with great uh, we have good grades, and we have a grade requirement that we have to have to be on Rangerettes. So it definitely pushes you. And just to reiterate on that, Dane and Shelley um, are always adamant about never taking them out of class for anything. I mean, it's, it's uh, I would say probably in the past 15, 20 years, Dane and Shelley have really focused on the academic side of it. And I think about 94% of the girls who leave Kilgore, who leave Rangerettes going to get their bachelors. And, it's a f and you're doing a full course load. Yes. Yeah, we, uh, we have to be full-time students, so a minimum of 15 credit hours. Okay. Well, I, yeah. feel, I feel a little embarrassed about my own college <laughs> experience in that case. <laughs> um, uh, so how long did it take you to make this? From inception 2011 until we wrapped in, we wrapped in late 2013, early 2014. As we we started in 2011 and wrapped in early 2014, technically. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it took it took a while. I mean, um, I swear we're still editing. <laughs> Even <laughs> it now. Yeah, it feels like, I feel like Sisyphus. Yeah, you're like make, making notes every time you screen it. Yeah. I try to I try to turn that side of me off when I come to festivals. Though I try to not even pay attention to the movie. <laughs> uh, there's a question somewhere up here. Hi, Olivia. I'm a ranger at mom. Hi. Um, I want you to be able to tell the audience what it was like, because I know you have been on a whirlwind trip to Scotland and Ireland, oh representing the Kilgore College Rangerettes, Texas, and the United States. Can you please tell the audience what the reaction was like from the Irish and the Scottish when oh. y'all were performing and doing the famous kick and jump split? Well, it was very, very interesting. Um, as she said, we just got back from Scotland and Ireland, which was a crazy trip, but it was amazing. We started in Scotland at Edinburgh University performing. Uh, they kind of had like a square that we performed in. And we walked in and we were like, um, where are we supposed to perform? Because it was all grass. And we were like, uh, and it was wet grass. And so we decided to just go for it on the grass and these beautiful buildings around us. And our music came on and a lot of forevers were around that were with us and a lot of um, just students from this college were outside and the music came on and we noticed all the windows opened and heads peeked out and they were like what's going on 
And when we did jump splits or when we did just little simple movements like grabbing our hat or kicking high, people went crazy. Like they had no idea what it was. They were like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Um, and then we were looking at Twitter lately or later at that afternoon and someone was like, you know, it's really hard to focus on my law class when there's uh, country music going on outside with cute girls doing the splits. <laughs> and I was like, oh gosh. So then we headed to Ireland, to Dublin for the St. Patrick's Day Parade and someone told us that there were going to be almost a million people there and we were like, I'm sorry, whoa. So as we were marching, um, we were walking by groups of people and everyone was just like, oh my gosh, look at these girls. Oh my gosh, I think they're from Texas. So I was like, yeah, we're wearing cowboy boots and cowboy hats and everybody just, we kind of, there was a silence almost as we walked by and then when we would do something and we do like a parade routine, they just go crazy. And then we went to Croke Park and performed at a uh, football game. It's like half football, half rugby, half crazy game. And we walked out on the field and everybody was silent and they, because nobody really performs unless you're um, from Ireland. And so we walked out and everyone was like, okay, what's going on? And the music started and no one was really doing anything and we did that first initial jump split and everybody screamed. And at the end of the performance, we actually got a standing ovation and it's the first standing ovation they've ever had. Um, so that was amazing and that feeling, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that feeling, just seeing everybody stand up, stand up was just um, it's very humbling and it's very, kind of brings you back down to earth and realize, it makes me realize like for the past 75 years, these girls have been doing this and I'm just carrying on the legacy and creating something great. So it was amazing going to Scotland and Ireland and seeing everybody just be in awe of us because we're in Texas and people are like, oh yeah, they're eating threats. And then we go other places and they're like, whoa, what are they? And you just feel so famous and it's, it's great. It's amazing, so. <laughs> Is there any uh, final questions? We have Time for maybe one more question. No? I'll have a maybe a final one for the two of you, is, which is kind of what's next? Um, in terms of filmmaking, what's next? And what's next in terms of your future plans? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I wish I could say I wanted to be a ranger at for, I mean, I will be a ranger at forever, but um, I'm going to Stephen F. Austin University, and I'm majoring in mass communications with a minor in public relations and Probably dance education. I mean, I don't really know. There's a lot of plans I want to do, but for right now, it's Stephen F. Austin. From Salt Lake to Nacogdoches. Yeah. Oh, I'm Actually, not wait. From Salt Lake to Kilgore to Nacogdoches. Nacogdoches. Yeah, you're I can not say, getting rid of I can me. say that I'm from East Texas, so. Yeah, I'm never leaving Texas. There's something about this place. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there's something about yeah, I think you just made it. a lot of friends. We'll, we'll, t we'll take you. We'll take yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, it's so you nice stay. here. I love it here. I'm never leaving. <laughs> um, if you would have told me four years ago whenever all this started that I would have not moved back to Los Angeles whenever the film was finished because I would be able to stay in Kilgore make a living making videos and commercials and just doing stuff I would have I would have thought you were insane so I'm actually in my second year of my own production company and I think a lot of it's because people have seen this and you know, they're, they want to hire me to do work, and so I decided instead of going back to L.A. and continuing to chase it, I might as well stay here where I can work, and it's been really good for me. I f it feels good to be back home. So, uh, oh, thanks. Well, you're welcome here. Oh. And you know what? And Olivia says I'm welcome back. Thank you, you are, so you're much. You're so welcome. <laughs> no, but I am um, actually kind of... Um, I'm hoping to get this into a television deal is kind of what I'm trying to, was where we're trying to get to next in hopes to maybe try to get a, um, a legitimate reality television series where that compares them to, you know, other athletic ventures such as football or basketball because I feel that that was one thing we really wanted to do is they aren't just pretty dancers. You know, these girls are extremely athletic and they work really hard and what's the difference between a football player's helmet and their hat? you know, or their cleats and their boots. So I think that there's a audience for these young women and what they do, I think that they're, I think it would translate really well. So that's my goal is to try to get a, a legitimate reality television series, not like anything like the Kardashians or anything like that. As you can, as you can tell though, you don't have to manufacture drama. I mean, there, it's right there. Yeah, awesome. Well, that's great. Um, so thank you very much for, oh, uh, you. for bringing thank that you. to us thank and so sharing much. it. We really liked awesome. it. Thank you very much.
and thank all of you for coming. So the uh, Victoria, Texas Independent Film Festival goes till tomorrow. So you know, please do stick around and check out some other movies. Next in this room, there's a, a, sh a showcase of shorts, the Schismatic Showcase, and it's the Beacon Bigfoot. Uh, there's vo Voices Thrown Silent and Myrna the Monster. So please do stick around and thanks again for coming.